But there's no way they could have reached that conclusion. So when we look at the evidence, we say, well, if there was evidence for the statement, maybe they believed this evidence and didn't believe that evidence. I mean, there's measurements 24 inches, 5 feet, and all kinds of different views on what was physically there on the ground, let alone what happened to whether he got hit in the head by this thing. By the way, at least the way I read the case, he fell in the wrong direction if he got hit by the mail. <coughs> um, but the jury may have decided, so what? They don't think that made a difference. Maybe he got hit in the head and he turned around and fell the other way. They're entitled to do that. It's a factual question. Okay. So the standard isn't whether it would be mere speculation or conjecture. Plaintiff is your low. Uh, but the jury decided for the plaintiff. Maybe they didn't really have any good reason to do so. What does the court, the Supreme Court of Missouri, call this mere speculation and, and conjecture? Right? We don't know how he died. The defense says he was murdered by some guy who was there. No evidence at all. No, 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 no. Can't ultimately prove that he was hurt by anything that happened that the railroad did. But that's not what the jury found. So the question is whether you can go behind that. All right. So the next paragraph says uh, the Supreme Court of Missouri said that all reasonable minds would agree that it would be mere speculation and conjecture to say that any was struck in by the mail. Right. Is that the standard? <coughs> What's the test? First of all, how do we look at the facts? How do we look at the evidence? Actually, the judge said this is admissible for what it is. Evidence of why the foreman was investigating. So that's that's the end of the, the that's the result of the argument. Now, you might ask yourself, if this testimony was so important, why did the railroad call this guy? Why did the railroad call the guy that talked to the foreman? Either party could have called this witness. Neither one of them did. Okay? Well, the plaintiff maybe didn't do it because the plaintiff was quite happy with the statement just the way it was. And this is a helpful statement, and you can't cross-examine it. You just have the foreman saying, this guy told me that's what happened. That sounds good to the jury. Stop right there. Besides, it's expensive to call more witnesses. On the other side, the railroad? Well, maybe they've actually talked to that guy. And maybe they know if they put him on the witness stand, he'll say, yes, that's what I think happened. I've seen these accidents before. Those male hooks come by here and they bump into people, or they almost hit people on a number of occasions. Even though we think we've done away with it in the United States because jury trials are a right to a trial in suits at common law, not at uh, not in equity. The ones we should ask about every case. Why is this case in federal court? How does this case get to federal court? Where is the jurisdiction? Yes, because it's a raised from federal law. Okay, it's a federal question case because there is something called the Federal Employers Liability Act, which covers these individuals, this, well, the decedent. It's an estate that's suing. All right. Of the foreman. Well, this is another one of these cases. Of course, somebody was hurt, somebody was killed. The company immediately sent somebody around to see what happened. How did this happen? Well, when he got there, someone else said to him, You better look carefully because I think this guy got hit in the head by the mail over. Was that person called as a witness? No. The person who actually said those words? No. So how do we know that anybody said this? Well, this guy said, the foreman said, that's why I investigated carefully, because I was told this. All right. So why is this? You know,